Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer Terry. I make Philippine travel updates. This video, we're going to summarize all the changes and we'll talk about the August travel guidelines. So I know I was just skimming through my videos and, uh, and I thought uh, it's hard to keep up with all the changes. If you're not somebody who religiously watches our update, you would think, oh, what if I missed? What if I missed uh, the information that was uploaded last week? So in this video, I've got you covered. I'm going to summarize it. All right. So I want to start this video with first just a quick explanation on life in the Philippines. We still wear masks everywhere you go. <laughs> Whether that's indoor, outdoor, you wear a mask. You bring a mask. So wearing a face mask is not as strict as before. While traveling within the Philippines, um, some areas still require vaccination proof for entry. However, um, as a replacement for vaccination proof, you can show a negative test result. While most areas don't require vaccination proof anymore. So let's say you're going to Manila, you're going to Cebu, you're going to Clark, you're going to Davao. You don't have to show a negative test result in those places I mentioned. While alert level system is being used in the Philippines, so for like for every province or city, there is an alert level. Alert level 1, 2, 3, 4, alert level 1 being the most relaxed. And the good thing is half or most of the areas in the country are under alert level 1 and the rest are under alert level 2. I am in alert level 2 and it's very relaxed. It's like we're living in pre pandemic times really i can't do anything i just have to wear a mask <laughs> anyways let's go now on the travel guidelines to the philippines what is the rule now jennifer what is the protocol the recent news is the detection of the first monkeypox case in the philippines from a traveler um, has it changed the travel protocols no it hasn't inbound travelers however are asked to do health screening through one health pass there's a question there that asks whether you have symptoms like fever skin lesions rashes and another thing you may undergo thermal scanning which is nothing new you know two years it's been there for two years thermal scanning if you have fever and then you may be asked to um, roll up your sleeves or remove your jacket this is to check whether you have rashes or lesions to detect whether you have monkeypox symptoms it's, yeah it's no biggie if, you, if they ask you to roll your sleeves roll it <laughs> but the good thing is there is no border closure doh clarified there is no need for that the who classifies monkeypox as low to moderate risk now let's go to the travel guidelines um let's discuss what is the definition of being fully vaccinated or with booster your vaccination status depends on how many doses have you received for. Well, first up, if you have received three doses, then you are considered fully vaccinated with booster. If you only have two doses, then you are considered fully vaccinated. And then if you have received no vaccine dose at all, or you only have one, let's say one Pfizer or one Moderna, then you are considered unvaccinated or partially vaccinated. But J and J is a different thing because it's a um, single shot vaccine. So let's say you receive one shot of J and J, po you are already considered fully vaccinated. While J and J plus one shot of another vaccine, you are considered fully vaccinated with booster. Now mixed doses are accepted. Okay, whether that's primary or booster, mixed doses are accepted, po. Now, booster shot is recognized regardless of the date it was administered. This was clarified by the Bureau of Quarantine in an, in an inquiry. And this has already been proven by our travelers. So if let's say, oh, I'm fully vaccinated, I don't have a booster. But then you found out that if you have a booster, you're exempted from pre-departure testing. So you thought i'll get i'll get the booster if you get the booster today you travel tomorrow then it's recognized there is no waiting time compared with the primary series yung first dose and second dose now you need pa to wait 14 days with booster shot there's no waiting time it's recognized 
regardless of the date it was administered. I recognize agad-agad. Now, on to the vaccination proof. This is very important because if you have a vaccination proof, fully vaccinated, no quarantine. So, these are the accepted vaccination proof in the Philippines and there is an update to that. So, first up, they will accept the yellow card. This one, whether that's issued by a BOQ or another countries, the International Certificate of vaccina Vaccination or Prophylaxis is accepted. Second is Vaxert PH. If you're vaccinated in the Philippines, you have Vaxert PH. That is also accepted. Then your national or state manual or digital vaccin vaccination certificate of the country or foreign government. So for us vaccinated abroad, the vaccination proof issued by your foreign governments are accepted. So there is no more, um, remember before the recipro reciprocity requirement? No. All official national certificates of vaccination will be accepted. Mutual recognition of reciprocity of vaccination certificate is no longer required. So remember before, there's a list of countries whose vaccination proof are accepted. No longer. That no longer applies. As long as you have a vaccination proof issued by a government, it is accepted. Like a CDC white card is accepted. Now let's talk about the protocols. First off, about testing. So since, let me wait there. Was that April? When the Philippines announced the exemption on pre-departure testing. So first up, if you're 18 years old and above and you're fully vaccinated with at least one booster, you are exempted from pre-departure testing. Oh my goodness, the amount of questions that I get from people. Mom, I'm fully vaccinated with booster. Am I exempted? Yes, po. yes, 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 yes. <laughs> if you have a booster, exempted from PCR or antigen. Hindi na kailangan magpatest kung may booster. Mom, may layover po ako sa Korea or sa Japan or sa Hong Kong or sa Taiwan or sa Dubai. As long as it is just a layover, you're not exiting the terminal, you're not going through immigration in your layover country, then no need to get tested. Those countries I mentioned do not require testing for transit passengers. Okay, if you want to make sure, you can call your airline or Google. Next up, 12 to 17 years old, as long as they're fully vaccinated, no need to get tested. 11 to 4 years old will follow the protocol of the traveling parent or guardian. So let's say I have a 4-year-old kid. I'm fully vaccinated with booster. Then the kid, I will be exempted from testing and so will my child. So again, the, the child 11 to 4 will just follow the protocol and requirements of the traveling parent. Or guardian while three years old and below are totally exempted next up we have for fully vaccinated with at least one booster no test no testing needed no quarantine upon arrival while fully vaccinated they need to show a negative test result same with the unvaccinated so what test is that present an rt-pcr test taken within 48 hours or a remotely supervised or a, or a laboratory-based rapid antigen negative test result administered and certified by a healthcare professional in a healthcare facility, laboratory, clinic, pharmacy, or other similar establishment taken within 24 hours before departure from the first port of embarkation in a continuous travel to the Philippines, excluding layovers, provided that he or she has not left the airport, or has not been admitted to the country of layover. So for the fully vaccinated and unvaccinated or partially vaccinated, you have two choices. Either PCR test or antigen. So PCR test, two days, within two days before your flight. So within 48 hours before your flight, get tested. Layover is not counted as long as you don't exit the airport or exit the terminal or go through immigration in your layover country. Basta layover lang, hindi na lalabas ng airport, hindi na po yan counted. Yan, RT-PCR or another option is an antigen test. If you ask me, Jennifer, what is a better option? For me, an antigen test is a better option because the results can be released within like 30 minutes or less and it's cheaper. 
But if you want PCR, go ahead. It's really up to you guys. PCR, you have more time to prepare because it's 48 hours valid. While antigen test, 24 hours. The unvaccinated protocol is still the same. Partially vaccinated and vaccinated will quarantine upon arrival. That's um, five days, five to six days. So if you are unvaccinated, you need a negative test result, either PCR or antigen. And then Nano if W is still at your own expense po. You pay for your own hotel. Mga OFWs, libre pa rin ng government ang inyong hotel. So sa hotel po, you should have five nights booking mga non-OFWs. While testing, itetest po kayo on the fifth day PCR po yan. Ayan. As soon as you receive your negative test result that was taken on the fifth day in the hotel, you will be released. Kung negative, alis ka na, uwi ka na. Again, OFWs, Wala lang libreng sakay pa uwi ng province, pero libre pa rin yung hotel. Nano if W's, gastos lahat. Hotel, pick up, testing, lahat. The last time I spoke with a traveler, mga nasa 2,900 pesos na daw yung testing. Mahal na po. Well, Jennifer, how about unvaccinated foreigners? Now, unvaccinated foreigners are still not allowed to enter the Philippines. Some were able to enter, like Adam. Hi, Jennifer. Just let you know, I'm unvaccinated Aussie. Entered via Cebu today. It was quite easy. Now, the hard part is five days quarantine. But some were denied. Some were allowed. It's a hit or miss. It all depends on your airline, whether they will accept you. And you should enter through Cebu because it's the only airport that accepts unvaccinated. However, again, it's still up to the airline whether they will accept you. I once mentioned that I would make a travel guide for unvaccinated foreigners. However, upon uh, I, I really thought about it for a long time, but I, I decided not to. It's just that you're still not allowed and I wouldn't want to be a cause of a foreigner being offloaded because they had false hopes of being accepted. It's better to wait when the IATF makes up their mind and allows unvaccinated foreigner. Then I will make the travel guide, guys. Sorry. I really don't want to give false hopes to travelers. Next up, we have testing and protocols for children. If you have children traveling with you, children 12 years old and above will follow the protocol of their own vaccination status. So if you have 12 years old and above must be fully vaccinated so they don't have to quarantine upon arrival while children 11 years old and below will just follow the protocol of their traveling parent or guardian if the traveling parent is fully vaccinated no quarantine it's that simple next up we go to one health pass it's still required for all passengers I still get a lot of questions. Jennifer, I'm, I'm, I have a booster. Jennifer, I have recently recovered. Do I have to register to One Health Pass? Yes, yes, yes. No one is exempted. Please register to One Health Pass. Children needs to be registered as well. So it's still required, no exemption. Second, you still have to submit your vaccination proof. And if required, a negative test result in One Health Pass. And then upon successful registration, you will be given a QR code if you're fully vaccinated or with booster. And if you are unvaccinated, you will be given a barcode. So this one is for, for the fully vaccinated and this one is for the unvaccinated. Now, a good thing is that One Health Pass is much simpler now. There's only one step. And then the barcode or QR code will be generated immediately. It's not like before where you had to wait, do a second step. No, it's just one step and the QR code or barcode will be given immediately. Immediately. However, email confirmation are no longer sent. So once you finish registration, they show you um, the QR code or barcode, screenshot, Make a copy, save it because email confirmation or an email copy will no longer be sent. If in case you were not able to save your QR code, you have no option but you have no other option but to make a new registration. So don't make that mistake. As soon as the QR code is shown on your screen, screenshot, save a copy. Okay? When to register, this is the timing. If you're fully vaccinated with booster, you can register within three days before your departure. 
If you're fully vaccinated, you register after you receive your negative test result because you have to submit it there. And then if you are unvaccinated, you can register within three days before your departure. Unvaccinated travelers, don't be surprised. Jennifer, I registered to One Health Pass, but um, it there's no form there where I could submit my negative test result. Don't be surprised. That's completely normal. For the, for the unvaccinated, they don't require you to submit your negative test result in One Health Pass anymore. Since you will go through manual verification upon arrival, they will actually check. Where is your vaccination proof? I want to see it. That's what happens. Now for the recently recovered, let's say, oh, I contracted COVID days before my flight. This is what you can do. If you have recently recovered and you are still required to show a negative test result, the chances are you're still going to show a positive test result, right? So, sa mga Pilipino po, ito po yung option natin. Kung recently recovered tayo at saka need pa natin magpakita ng negative test result, ito yung gagawin. Kailangan magpakita ng positive RT-PCR test within 48 hours before departure. Medical certificate galing sa doktor na nagsasabing kompleto ka na ng quarantine, hindi ka na infectious at pwede ka nang mag-travel. And then yung positive test result mo, nung nag-positive ka, dapat hindi siya not earlier than 10 days but not later than 30 days. I know, parang complicated, no? Ang advice ko, guys, magpa-booster na lang kayo. Oo. Kasi kung may booster, hindi na kailangan ng negative test result. Wala na masyadong ek-ek. O sa mga fully vaccinated dyan, pa-booster na lang po. Kung recently recovered kayo, para hindi nyo na magpa-test. Hmm. I know, medyo complicated. Sana baguhin to ng government. Sana medical certificate na lang. Masyadong complicated. Anyways, ito po yung kailangan. Nag-contact ako sa BOQ today. today. Ito talaga yung kailangan. While for foreigners and former Filipinos who recently recovered and uh, you don't have a booster, so you, need, you still need to show a negative test result, but you are still testing positive, I'm sorry. There is no recovery option for you. There's no uh, like showing a medical certificate option for you. You really have to show a negative test result. Again, if you have recently recovered from COVID, please show a negative test result if you are a former Filipino or a foreign national. I know it's ridiculous. They should allow you to show negative uh, a medical certificate. I will lobby that. In summary, in summary, information con can be overwhelming. For Filipinos, vaccinated or not, pwedeng umuwi kahit sa ang airport. Kahit ano pang vaccination, kahit walang vaccine, pwede umuwi basta Filipino citizen. Filipinos, of course, kahit pa po less than 6 months na lang valid yung passport nyo, pwede pa rin umuwi. So, this is the list, guys. Kailangan nyo ng One Health Pass. And then, na QR code kung fully vaccinated. Vaccination proof. Negative test result kung walang booster. Gayun lang, yun lang. While sa mga unvaccinated na Filipino, kailangan ng One Health Pass barcode, negative test result, RT-PCR or antigen, and then kung nano OFW, kailangan ng pre-booked quarantine hotel for 5 nights. Hindi po basta-basta ang hotel, kailangan po yung lista na accredited ng government. Nakalagay po sa description ko box ko yung mga list po, i-check nyo po. While for former Filipinos and your spouse and children, there is still balik bayan privilege. So if you are a former Filipino or a spouse of a Filipino or former Filipino, you can get balik bayan privilege, which gives you one year visa free entry and stay in the Philippines. Another thing is that if you are 12 years old and above, you must be fully vaccinated. You are under the foreign national category. Insurance is no longer required. Still, a lot of people ask. Insurance no longer required. It's optional now. Return ticket is not required since you're covered by Balikbayan privilege. So this is your checklist. One Health Pass QR code, a vaccination proof, negative test result if you don't have a booster. For former Filipino, kindly bring your old Philippine passport or birth certificate. If you don't have it, don't stress. Next is a foreign spouse marriage certificate for your foreign children birth certificate. Well, let's go to foreign nationals, foreign tourists. 
If you're 12 years old and above, you must be fully vaccinated. Next up is that your passport should be at least six months or more than six months valid upon arrival in the Philippines. Next up, you have two options. If you are non-visa required national, let's say you're an American, a Canadian, an Australian, a UK national, a German, Dutch national, you can enter visa free. You can come in here without securing a visa, but you will be given 30 days stay. So before that 30 days is up, go to an immigration office to extend your stay if you want to stay longer than 30 days. Then um, if you want to secure a visa, you can also do that since uh, Philippine embassies and consulates abroad have opened up to accepting applications for 9A visa or visitor visa. So you have two options, apply for a visa or come in visa free. Totally up to you. While if you are a visa required national, yes, again, 9A visas are open for applications at the embassies, Philippine embassies. So here is your checklist, a One Health Pass QR code, vaccination proof, a negative test result if you don't have a booster, ticket to your country of origin or next country of destination according to your allowable stay. So if you're coming in as visa free, you should have a ticket that is leaving the Philippines within 30 days. And then your passport should be at least six months valid. Six months or more. I, I get people ask me, oh, oh, my passport is two years valid. Is this okay? Yes. As long as it is more than six months valid, you're good. So that is really all about travel to the Philippines. Um, we are closely monitoring the updates with monkeypox. No, we don't know whether it will be as bad as COVID-19. I don't think so. Experts say not because it's not as transmissible and there is already an existing vaccine against it. We just hope that it doesn't worse. It doesn't get worse. It doesn't reach our shores. We have reported one case. I hope it stays that way. So let's closely monitor the situation. I will let you know if there's any changes. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to stay updated. God bless you all. Please leave a like on the video. It helps the channel and helps me continue doing these updates. God bless you all and stay safe.